I think there's there's really like because uh, it's something like it's a kind of a thread I've been chasing through like the interviews like the for lack of a better word like the magic of creation like where ideas come from you know imp like emotional impulses for actors you know uh music for musicians you know yeah it, it's it's a mystery it's but it's it's somewhere inside of you and it's just so weird to talk about and that I think that's the one thing that like the part of the myth myth building of acting is kind of left out that it, there's a process but there's also kind of that big question mark of okay I don't know where that came from but okay we'll use it <laughs> sure and on film additionally there's the like the editing that happens after <clears throat> like mm -hmm. it, it looks like that actor reacted in this way in their performance and it's like well that could have been frankenstein from another part of the scene with like dialogue overlaid so that it looks continuous like it's <laughs> it's part of the fun you know but it's like uh i don't know the secrets of the trade or whatever <laughs> yeah it really is like I mean there's so much that the crafts people put into it you know because I think people think oh well you know the directors and maybe the directors but definitely the actors but there's so much else that go that goes to it so I think there's that that top layer that people see and there's so much else under going on underneath that they're not even aware of yeah yeah and uh, frequently I mean, everyone likes what they like, but like a lot of the acting I like best is in, in kind of like invisible. I like to say, like you you can't tell that someone's acting. You know, you, you might think like all they do is like just walk around and be themselves. Or it's like, <laughs> no, buddy, if you knew how hard how hard it is to convince someone that you're just being yourself, like holy shit. <laughs> That's really, that's really one of the hardest uh, things. And I think it's one of the first things like a lot of actors have to contend with is just like standing in front of like a camera or an audience and going, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I have to walk now <laughs> and say stuff at the same time. And the, the people have no idea how, how difficult that can actually be without being self-conscious. That's the first, that's the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. Audiences can read self-consciousness immediately. Completely, yeah, yeah, it's it's incredible. It's yeah, it's it's a fascinating thing to do for a living, and a fascinating, strange thing to do as an adult. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so you, I know that you. Here's a question: um, You had to work with snakes. What was that like? <laughs> it was great. I love. I loved it. <laughs> I, I like snakes. It wasn't an issue for me. So yeah, but just I mean that big, beautiful like banana yellow. Was it a python? A python, and I believe her name was banana. <laughs> her name was banana. Oh no, <laughs> she was really, really sweet. Um, it was it was so cool. The um, the the animal handlers that we had um had just come back from or spent the day at a, uh, a a children's birthday party with all their snakes so they showed up with like I don't want to say 40 snakes in all these containers like separate oh my god containers. and they don't usually they aren't like strictly film people they, they do yeah. educational stuff and parties and things like that so mm -hmm. they, they were I think that's partly why they were really like not unsafe, but like loose with the the animals. Like a lot of them were their personal pets, which is true of, of most animal handlers. But um, there'd be a break, and they'd sort of be like, "Anyone want to hang on to a snake? <laughs> Anyone want to play with a snake?" <laughs> it's just this sort of bizarre traffic pattern through the the living room where the snakes were. People being like, "Can I hold another snake? Can I touch that?" <laughs> And it's asking because like, yeah, sure, whatever you want. Um, and I was nervous at first because any like animal that you're unfamiliar with, like 
it will bite me. How can I hurt it? Like what, ha what, you know, what are the things I need to be aware of? And they're like, well, I'll start with this one. This one's like my pet and she's super mellow. And it was like, I think an albino um, snake, just this like beautiful white and pink little, little guy and Aww. got used to that. And then they're like, now try another one. Now try two. And now let's put it here. And, and then very quickly, I was like really comfortable because they, they, they they won't fall off you they're used to like climbing things right so you just yeah. put them there and they'll they'll hang on they'll they'll move around and um you know there there was one snake and it was like okay so what if they bite me like or will it strangle me and they were like it, it they, she won't you know but if she does we know how to stop her from doing that. and we'll also see long before she starts doing it that that's about to happen and we'll stop it okay great and if she bites me like how bad is the bite and they were like, I mean, it hurts, but it's like a bite. And then I'm like, I, my cat bites and scratches me all the time. Like, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> who cares? It's fine. It's yeah. Fine. It's going to be worse than a cat bite is basically what they, what they told me. Maybe some of the bigger ones would be, but there was one that was like, uh, this iridescent snake, like looked like it was covered in an oil slick. And they were like, you should see her because she's like so pretty, but she's mean as hell. So they had to like hold her head so she wouldn't like bite in. <laughs> <laughs> she's you know, gorgeous, but she'll bite you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then uh when we started going, it was kind of like, we'll see what the snakes do because they aren't, I don't know if there's such a thing as a trained snake to begin with, but like. We'll put them on you. We'll try and get them to to do whatever. We know that they'll probably try to get higher up and like your head's warm and they try to get high. And mm -hmm. we'll just start shooting and see what happens. And like, they all, de they deserve acting awards. They were so good. The uh, banana at one point was doing this like living, the caduceus, it's not the thing. The, the what's the thing that like the, the Egyptian headdress with the- Oh, like the asp at the yeah. top? It's like a, there's like a, anyway, she was on my head and then just starts extending out. And because she's just like a hundred percent neck can like stick out like three or four feet and oh. then curled around the boom. It was so much fun. It was so oh my God. Much fun. Yeah. And they were so strong too. So like when, you, you know, you see the part where I have like a lot of snakes right up around my head. Mm-hmm fully appear it was kind of hard to keep my head from like moving very much because they they were just like when they would move solid muscle yeah they're just kind of like pushing pushing me around a bunch <laughs> oh and one of them had a had a um a bit of a cold so you could hear her like snuffling in my ear it was a snake had a cold yeah so she had like <laughs> one of a stuffed nose oh <laughs> I all the stuff that you learn when when you're do, you're working on a film and when I'm talking to you wow I had no idea but that makes total sense sure yeah why everyone gets sick I guess everyone can get sick I don't know oh yeah but also but also snakes having so much muscle because that's what they do their whole body is like they have to move without legs yeah and when they're like on your head and like whole, your, your whole upper body is covered in snakes you can really like feel that kind of like articulating motion because you know, when mm -hmm. you see them move you're just like I don't know how you I don't know how you get anywhere that doesn't make any sense to me but it was kind of nice to feel this like rippling snaky body moving around I don't know I loved it yeah I like, <laughs> love them even more now that's awesome oh and one thing that I noticed is that um Meredith actually has like two groups of like women um allies she's got her friends in the um in the museum at the beginning mm -hmm. and not that they go totally go away but it's like when the RNAs you know kind of appear she's got like another like set of female um I don't know if I want to call them friends but uh, feminine support and strength you know because it's it's kind of like it's it's a weird mirror image of like the first group with the second group yeah and like again I'm trying not to get into too much into spoilers but I did notice that 
And I was just wondering, what was it like, like working with, um, cause I assume like probably when you work on other films and TV, you know, you're maybe not working with women so much. What was, was it different working with like groups of women as opposed to maybe like, you know, with men and a lot more men than women? Um, maybe, yeah. I mean, it was, it was really important that M Meredith and her friends really read as like friends with history that that like really hits like a real, like a real relationship. And mm -hmm. you, you act, right? Yeah. So I don't know if this tracks for you, but I find it a lot easier to sort of, if you have a, 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 a partner, a spouse, a girlfriend, boyfriend, some sort of like love interest to mm -hmm. keep them on the day and be like, okay, that's us. We can make that look pretty believable really quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, with friends, like if it's like, okay, you two are best friends. It's like, how do you like, what's the shorthand for that? What are even the sort of like um, touchstones to, to make it clear that that's a real relationship? It, it's, it's really hard. Yeah. You know? Um, I think it's the nature of friendship, you know, that it's not a, a very prescribed, like delineated thing. It can, it can be, be so many different ways or whatever. But uh, so we, uh, Lakshmi and Tanya and I went for lunch um, mm -hmm. when, uh, when I got to New Jersey. And thankfully, we really hit it off. Um, it wasn't like to rehearse it was really just to like get to know each other and try to find things that you know what's a what's a dynamic with and you know a dynamic of three friends is always interesting too like so it was fun to play with that um yeah so we spent some time just getting to know each other and like finding a rapport to mm -hmm. use and to it um and then with the with Katie and Malin the the other Furies, the other Aeneas, um, we had the uh, sort of obstacle of two thirds of us being in masks, um, not saying very much really, um, and not even necessarily moving very much when we're together, but kind of appearing and being, you know, sort of like the the statue that he that he has in the beginning of the movie. And so it was like, how, what, what, how do we do something with this so that we're not just like standing there whenever like, and cut to them standing there and now mm -hmm. standing there. And um, we came up with a bunch of like basically tableaus, you know, prepared, mm -hmm. uh, that we could sort of draw from. Um, and I thought it was really important that they, uh, there was no hierarchy between them, that there was no um, acrimony. Like they, they're they good, like they're, they are the furies. They're, they're mm -hmm. good. <laughs> you know, like you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're not gonna win, you're not gonna fuck with them. They're fine, <laughs> you know? So like, here we are, this is our thing. Um, we're right, we're gonna win and mm -hmm. we care about what we're doing. And so how do you express that and also a relationship within that and some sensuality? So I thought it was important that they like touch each other sometimes that there's a like, I suppose, I suppose like feminine, some of those feminine qualities. Um, so that was really fun coming up with different, different um, screenshot images sort of to, to, to work with. Um, there's that like, I thought it was the the like three of the supermodels, but I think it was actually the women from Twin Peaks that like magazine cover and they're all in jeans and their hair is all huge and beautiful and they're just like standing together beautifully. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that image, like, can we get, can we have a, a moment like that where we're just like luxuriating in in you know our ourselves and each other and whatever? Yes. Yeah, so, Your feminine beauty and power. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. And righteousness and, and, you know, um, there's a certain peacefulness among them because there's no 
there's nothing not to be to feel peaceful about between them. Um, yeah, so that was that was really fun to work with. Um, yeah, yeah. So, because um, I did notice, the, and it, it draws me back to like the manipulative nature of like Josh's character that um, one of the RNAs actually does kind of um, indulge in that type of like, basically the RNAs can throw anything that he could throw at them back harder. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, you know the scene I'm talking about, I'm not going to say it for sure, but you know, the one where he, he sees um, Malin's character and it, it's just, it's just, whatever you whatever you can come up with we're gonna hit you harder <laughs> yeah and uh, I wanted to ask what was it like working with Josh in those particular two roles um it's like the easiest thing in the world the it was so he he and I work in a similar way um and so it's nice once you start acting with someone and like, I guess what I mean, like we were both, it was different each take. So, so you know, we were, we were going off each other a lot and um, mm -hmm. actors don't as much work that way, which is fine. But um, it was sort of like, oh, cool. He, he sort of plays in the same way I do. Uh, mm -hmm. And we both recognize that in each other. So that was fun. Um, he's a really lovely, very friendly person and he's very funny and, uh, so when he's around, it keeps the mood light and, you know, 25 days of night shoots <laughs> outside, you know, it, it's not, it wasn't an easy job for, for anyone to say the least, but Josh really made it, I think a lot, a lot better for everyone. Um, so he's just wonderful and he's a really good, smart actor and he's so game for it too. Like not, bothered by anything or he never really let on but I really don't think you know like I think the things that were uncomfortable he had that um uh, appliance on his eye and like mm -hmm. you know no one loves wearing that so it's not comfortable <laughs> it's in the eyes it takes forever to get on it's just you know it's a thing but he, he's one of those people who's like yeah it, it's uh maybe this kind of sucks in a way but like actually this is really fun like, this is what <laughs> Fun for us so like it's great you know it's fine um so yeah I I I couldn't say enough good things about him and plus like the way he played that character kind of blew blows me away I mean he he really insists on making Bruce a, a person just mm. a person and that's all he is and that's all anyone is and um it's so effective you know um and hits sort of differently um rather than kind of like turning you know like a bad man into a monster in a movie um it it's really different to to never let him be sort of grander than what he actually is o outside is outsized in a way and so you can laugh at bruce um which is really really fun you know and I find like very cathartic to be able to <laughs> turn someone terrible into the butt of a joke is like kind of you know I mean that's a great revenge in my opinion <laughs> you know? oh no they they hate that they hate being made fun of in, in case in point the the god emperor of twitter he hates being made fun of of course he <laughs> hates it it's unbearable it's unbearable to them which is <laughs> hilarious and like in life they can cause so much they can wreak so much havoc from like on a, on a single person scale to entire countries or entire social media platforms wreak havoc and so it's really hard just to laugh at these people who ultimately it comes down to them having tantrums all the time like they just want they think they should have whatever they want and if they can't get it they'll have a tantrum and it's not funny mm -hmm. but it causes harm <laughs> yeah in our, in our movie like not you know 
that's the revenge. He, he's, you know, he's destroyed by his own tantrum. Yeah. <laughs> okay, buddy, whatever. Well, in, in a way, it's like they don't, they, they don't really have to do anything to him. They just wind him up and let him go. Yeah. And he does it to himself. He does. And I think he, I think he wanted him, them to destroy him because what a, what a grand exit, you know, <laughs> of a king or of a God, like, like, of course he's not being held accountable by a human woman who he harmed. He's like, no, no, the actual ancient deities have descended from the mountaintops to to punish me because I'm so special. And it's like, fuck you. You're like, you suck. And that's the end of the story. Like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, that then what well, that's one of the things I love so much about the movie and particularly your guys' performance at the as the Aaron is, is just like you just make him such a figure of fun. You you just you just like to just it's like just pulling the pin on him and watching him deflate like like one of those like big like seemingly big like uh, things at the Macy's parade. It's like, oh no. Yeah. No, like, no, help me. like <laughs> distorted <laughs> the face is like like what happened? <laughs> yeah, you you really weren't that we let we let you mythologize mythologize whoa <laughs> uh mythologize yourself into this big grand being and you're really not that yeah. you, it's like our tendency to give power to these monsters or tyrants i think tyrants is a better a better word for it but yeah yeah we, we hand them the power and one of, I, one of the most important lessons i think of the film you know i think like it needs a lesson but one of the most important themes is that you can take that power right back you don't have to give it to them yeah 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 and i think like w w we give it to them in a way like because if you I think with certain people, with whatever's wrong with people like this, it, I think it ca actually causes them suffering to be, have themselves reflected back to them. They, mm -hmm. Or to be not even made fun of, but to be like, hey, you did something wrong. And to hold them to that, they, I think it weirdly causes them suffering. And so you know it's a natural response to be like okay you're suffering let me back off then I don't want you to be hurting and it's like but that's it's not like suffering for a normal reason like do you, you know what I mean like um it's not like I stepped on your foot and I'm like oh no I stepped on your foot I'm sorry yeah you like, know like, it, like it wasn't anything that they did it was just an accident you know oh okay I'm sorry yeah. you know I didn't mean it you know in fact it's like it, you stepped on my foot and for some reason me saying you hurt my foot is causing you suffering and like that's not my problem you know so i'm not gonna exactly it's okay i'll go nurse my foot in private it's like, like no my foot hurts you did it so you're sorry <laughs> sorry and and if not like then the i don't know what the consequences will be like we aren't gonna hang out anymore or whatever you know like, yeah I'm going to say, God, what a person just stepping on people's feet. What, what do you mean? What type of person are you? Who are you? Knock it off. <laughs> no one likes that. Yeah. Do you, this person will come to your party, step on your feet and refuse to say they're sorry. Exactly. You, why would you want that person around? Exactly. You have nice <laughs> shoes, you know, don't run yeah. your shoes wrecked and your feet sore. <laughs> yeah. What if they step on your foot and break your toe? Oh my God. It can happen, it you can know. Happen. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a weirdly apt metaphor. It's like yeah, hurting somebody and then blaming them for what you did. Yeah, essentially. 